we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Welcome everybody to our harvest celebration, Eucharist, this morning. And perhaps church doesn't look quite like it has looked at harvest services in the past. We know there are particular reasons for that this year. Um, but we will, in a moment, have a few uh, symbolic items brought forward and placed on the altar to remind us of all that we bring, not just today, but throughout the year, <coughs> to God, to give thanks for all that God gives to us. So, we'll remain seated to hear our first hymn, which has been specially recorded for today's service. And as the hymn begins, uh, one or two good folks will bring some items up to the altar. So we now hear the hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving. Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. And so as we continue in our worship, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so on this Harvest Celebration Sunday we call to mind those ways in which we have not shared the resources that we've been given or not being thankful for the good things of creation. So let us keep a moment of stillness as we call to mind those things for which we ask God to forgive us today.
let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. We confess to you our lack of care for the world you have given us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our failure to protect resources for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So together we say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. we hear the collect prayer for our harvest celebration. <clears throat> Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Do please sit. Before we hear our first reading, we're going to um, think a little bit more about our theme today. We're supporting today the work of Tia Fund, a Christian charity who work in all sorts of different situations across the world, especially where there is need and in countries which are still developing their healthcare and other infrastructure. In a moment we're going to see a video which tells the story of Tamam, who has had to leave her home in Syria, as many hundreds of thousands have recently, and she's found a new home in Lebanon. So we're going to hear a little bit of her story, which will tell us a little bit more about the work that Tia Fund are doing with those people who've had to make that journey as refugees. It's hard to explain the meaning of home. It's the feeling of having all my family and holding them dear in my heart. All that's left in this photo is me. Everything else is gone. My husband, my child, garden and home. I miss them. I miss my home. Because of the warfare and the living conditions, we decided it was better to leave. We had fighting on both sides and we were in the middle. At 3 a.m. my children and I left our home. We fled, keeping as quiet as we could. I could only bring our photos and IDs which I hid in my clothing. It was a terrifying ordeal for the children. The dead bodies and fighting scared them. We came across that everywhere we went. 
Tjevon is reaching out to the most vulnerable uh, refugees in Lebanon in order to overcome the trauma which they have experienced both when they were fleeing from Syria and also when they are now living in a very tough condition. As a Christian organization, Tjevon works with all those who are in need regardless of religion which often are being done through our partners, Christian organizations and, and churches. And this by itself is a great testimony for anybody who are witnesses the action of Tier Fund. We experience difficulties. The water here is salty and scarce. Everything is different in Syria. Our houses were better. I miss my house, my land and my garden. Sometimes I cry a lot. The needs in Syria and Lebanon are so great today. But it is the privilege for Tiafan to work with the partners on the ground. Tahari is helping women like Taman in an area where 75% live in extreme poverty. And Tahari is a home for many of the families who are living in this area. Here they can get help with education to their children. They have a health center, they have psychologists, social workers, helping those who have been traumatized. One thing more, it is skill training. As Taman, she is learning to saw, so she can earn some money and uh, later on, hopefully, she can go back to Syria and she can use the skills she has learned at Tahadi Center. The Tahadi Center helped me stand on my feet. Being a seamstress, I am the breadwinner. My four children go to school here. I hope for a happy future for my children and never experience what I experienced. I hope to teach my children to sew, to open a small sewing business in Syria and have a better life than the one I had. I wish that Syria would be safe again. I wish for that every waking second and that we'd go back home and have peace. So we'll now hear our Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, beginning at verse 7. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land flowing with flowing streams with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions, he made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the, in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. 
Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand to hear together the gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. Gather the fruit for eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus then told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouses nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? you of little faith. And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit. The parable which we heard just now at the beginning of our Gospel reading portrays a man who in many ways is a model member of society. He works and plans and saves and seeks to protect his belongings. He expects to enjoy what he has acquired and looks to make his future as secure as possible. Those who conduct their lives in this way caring for themselves and for those who depend on them, are considered prudent and good stewards of what has been entrusted to them. But in the parable which Jesus tells, the man hasn't acted wisely at all. The mistake of the rich man is not success or enjoyment, but selfishness and greed. The rich man's faith in possessions discourages him from sharing his surplus. This material excess can become, among other things, a form of security which replaces the trust that is better placed in God's, in God's provision. 
So to those of us who seek to dwell in the realms of God's kingdom, this parable provides a sharp lesson. The person whose identity is tied up with their possessions, status and achievements, and is then driven by acquiring more of them, can very easily become immune to the call of God and the need of a neighbour. The alternative is a life which is rich towards God and is devoted to serving God each day, which includes having our eyes open to the needs of others. The rich man clearly had ability and a head for making plans, but he lacked wisdom and humility. Perhaps he would have responded better if he'd borne in mind the words from our first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. And these are some of the words we heard. When you've eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. As we consider today the relationship between receiving and giving, it seems that the words of Jesus at the end of the Gospel reading are a good rule to follow. One of the more colourful um, interpretations of the Bible, the message version, um, puts part of our Gospel reading this way. And Jesus is saying, what I'm trying to do here is get you to not be so preoccupied with getting, so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. What Jesus is speaking about is being free from fear. The fear of not being enough, the fear of not having enough. Rather, says Jesus, seek the beauty and grace of God's kingdom and allow that to put things into a larger perspective. As we saw a few minutes ago in the video that we watched, in the life of Tamam, there is a lot of need in God's world. When war came to Syria, all of Tamam's crops died, her animals starved, and her family became hungry when supplies of food ran out or became unaffordable. What Tamam needs, and hundreds of thousands like her, is for those who have plenty to share something of what they have. As Jesus and the writer of Deuteronomy tell us, each of us depends on God. None of us is entirely self-sufficient. Once we understand that, we can begin to loosen our grip on the things we call ours and allow others to share in them. To end, I'd like to read a short poem in which the poet acknowledges the gifts that God gives, even in the apparent ordinariness of life. The poem is called Look and See, written by Mary Oliver. This morning at Waterside, a sparrow flew to a water rock and landed by error on the back of an eider duck. Lightly it fluttered off, amused. The duck, too, was not provoked, but, you might say, was laughing. This afternoon, a gull sailing over our house was casually scratching its stomach of white feathers with one pink foot as it flew. O oh Lord, how shining and festive is your gift to us if we only look and see. Amen. Amen.
let us now stand to affirm our faith in God together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit as we... Today, as we celebrate our Harvest Festival, with the changing conditions under which we now live, it has made us more aware than ever of the bountiful gifts provided for us on this earth and this planet. Help us always to remain grateful for what we have, being aware that we are blessed with so many gifts, and help us not to yearn for what we do not need. We pray for all those who will receive our gifts today and all others who are forced by their circumstances to use food banks. We pray that their lives may change so that they can in the future lead lives where they will have their own means of providing food for their families. We pray today for those who work to provide our food those who work the land, doing their best to grow crops where changes in climate make it so much more challenging. We thank you for the shopkeepers and delivery drivers who make themselves vulnerable to COVID-19 to supply us with our food. The very well-known harvest hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter, includes the words, All are safely gathered in. And so I read now a prayer written, <coughs> sorry, included in the book called Our Angel, Acorns and Archangels from the Iona Community. Not so safely gathered in in recent years. Climate change, human greed, floods, drought and disease have taken their toll. God of creation, as we in inverted commas, sing the joyful hymns and admire the harvest display. Give us compassion and understanding that moves beyond our dismay at the increased prices in our shops into prayer and active concern for those whose livelihoods depend on the harvest in all its forms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we reflect on the situation across the world today, we are aware of so many areas of conflict that have given rise to war and aggression. We pray for the so many innocent people who are caught up in these situations and who as a consequence live without shelter, without the basic necessities of life, food, water and clothing, and who are in desperate need. We pray for the countless refugees, often unwelcome and unwanted, with no control over their own future. And so I now read the tear from prayer related to the video that we have just seen. We bring to mind all the refugees from Syria went through seeing their homes and family life destroyed, forced to make agonising decisions to flee their own country, to live in a foreign land. 
help us to stand alongside families who've lost everything. Help us to share your compassion with people in greatest need who feel broken and abandoned. Show us how we can respond to situations like those we have just witnessed that seem so overwhelming. May all families fleeing their home find a place of welcome and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Yeah. We pray for our government and all who are decision makers as we seek to control COVID-19. We pray that all people will keep to the rules, difficult though they may be for many, that the virus may be contained whilst we seek a vaccine. We pray that everyone will have a sense of responsibility, that they may have concern for the good of all people. We pray for all who are ill with the virus and the relatives and friends who have lost loved ones. We give you thanks for the dedication of those caring for those infected with the virus who put their own lives at risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Yeah. We pray for all those whose future is of grave concern with the lack of opportunities for work and the uncertainties of employment or redundancy. We pray for all on reduced place wages and for all who for a variety of reasons are unable to claim benefits. We pray for the business owners who struggle to survive and those who have been now forced to face trading. We pray for all those who are finding life stressful at this time for those who are lonely, those who are depressed, those who are anxious, and those who are struggling with mental health problems. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Yeah. And we pray for our church. We thank you that this morning we have been able to come together once again in worship, albeit under somewhat unfamiliar circumstances. We pray that in the coming weeks we may still continue to adjust to these changes and that in fellowship within the congregation may still continue to flourish despite our restricted circumstances. We pray for all who are unable to come to church at this time, those who are ill, those who are isolating, and those who do not feel confident to return. We pray for our bishops and those in authority within the church as they seek to lead and guide. Help them in their decision making as they look to find solutions, particularly with the financial circumstances that we face at the present time. We give you thanks for the leaders of our own parish for the clergy and the wardens who have taken on extra responsibilities in recent times. And so we pray for Rector Jane, Simon and Helen, and all others who assist in the parish. Be with them, Lord, as they too seek to cope with the extra burdens put upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Saviour, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand to share the peace together. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Thank you.
And so from our places, let's offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. And then when you are ready, do please sit as we hear the offertory hymn. other gifts here on the altar, we're also asked to remember Audrey Hempson, who is very ill, and also remember Shirley and her family. God of all goodness and grace, you are always so generous to us. Receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You bring forth bread from the earth. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You create the fruit of the vine. Blessed be God forever. So if you are able, please stand as... The Eucharistic prayer begins. The Lord is here. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. And now we give you thanks because you make us stewards of your creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with St. Helen, St. Michael, and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit as we continue to pray together. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. 
Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in the bread and the wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we hear our final hymn, are there any notices to to give? Okay. Uh, Chris, do you want to say something about tear fund and giving? Yeah. Um, we were hoping that the uh, tear fund gift envelopes would be available for you to take away with you and consider your giving. Fortunately, they haven't arrived in the post, but we should be getting them this week, so um, they'll be available next week. But otherwise, do go to the tear fund website and there's a easy for you to give through that way um, and support the work that's going on in that place. And again, thank, thank you so much. So, are oh, you coming now, Phil? Okay. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Jean. Let's now hear our final hymn. Thank you. 
stand to hear the words of God's blessing. May God, our Creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, bestow on you his care and increase the harvest of your righteousness and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 And now, tend the earth, care for God's good creation, and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.